There are various types of congenital heart disease. Again, any heart problem that occurs during the development of the heart or where a baby is born with a heart defect is a CHD. Welcome, I'm Dr. Ford, the Nikki Doc, and you're watching the What Is Serious. So let's get to the definitions. Ah, but right before that, go ahead and hit that like, hit subscribe, make sure you hit that notification button. That way you can see the whole series and all the other videos I have on the channel. All right, let's go get to the definition now. All right, everybody, welcome back. I am the Nikki Doc, and this is the What Is Serious. Today, we're actually gonna be talking about congenital heart disease, or CHD. What is CHD? So, CHD is essentially a cardiac disease, congenital heart disease. This is where a baby is born with some congenital defect. Um, that means something that occur during the development of the baby. There are various types of congenital heart disease. Again, any heart problem that occurs during the development of the heart or where a baby is born with a heart defect is a CHD. Now, there are five common congenital heart disease, CHDs, that can actually cause cyanosis, that can have you know the typical presentation of a blue baby. An easy way to remember this is actually using your five fingers. So. First of all, you have a truncus arteriosus. Secondary, you have a transposition of great arteries. Third is tricuspid atresia. Fourth is tetralogy of Fallot. And then the fifth one is total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Okay, so now let's talk about individually the five common cyanide heart lesions. So the first one is the truncus arteriosus. Essentially, you normally have two main arteries coming out of the heart. Your aorta, which is that oxygenated blood, and your pulmonary artery, which is deoxygenated blood. But in a truncus arteriosus defect, you actually don't get, normally what's, uh, what you have uh, congenitally being created is you have a big trunk that then kind of twists and then gets split, so you have these sort of twisting effect, and now you develop two arteries. However, in truncus arteriosus, arteriosus, that splitting doesn't happen. That twisting and splitting doesn't happen. So you actually have one main vessel coming out of the heart. As we talked about, because there's mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, you get that cyanotic lesion. All right, now we're gonna be talking about a TGA, or a transposition of great arteries. So normally you have the left ventricle pumping oxygenated blood into the aorta, which obviously then takes oxygen to the rest of the body. And on the right side, you have the oxygenated blood going into the right ventricle, and then that pumps into the pulmonary artery so that it can pick up oxygen from the lungs. However, in a TGA, you actually have those switched back. And this is really a DTGA. Um, you actually have those switched around. So now you have the left ventricle, and that's pumping blood into the pulmonary artery. So think about that. You have oxygenated blood coming from the pulmonary veins to your left ventricle, and you are pumping oxygenated blood back into the lungs. Not very uh, functional, right? And on the uh, flip side to that, you now have the right ventricle that's picked up all this deoxygenated blood, and that's pumping into your aorta, the blood vessel that's gonna take blood to the rest of the body, so you are pumping deoxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So you must have some connection that allows because they're essentially now, you have two parallel systems going on at the same time. You gotta have a connection between that. So that usually is in the form definitely a PDA, a patent arteriosus, to be able to you know, keep them, to, uh, mix, keep, keep those blood uh, mixes, mixing. And then you also usually have a ventricular septal defect uh, so that, again, that VSD, the wall between the left and the right ventricle that's gone, allows for that blood to mix and then you get that cyanotic effect. Okay, now let's talk about tricuspid atresia. So, atresia is, it didn't develop, and tricuspid is actually that valve that separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. So, it is essentially that the valve that separates those two chambers did not develop. So what ends up usually happening is that you have a very small right ventricle because of that, and usually blood comes into your right atrium and will probably cross over to the left atrium, um, you know, for the most part. If it's a tretic, you don't have that valve, therefore you don't really produce the flow to be able to create an appropriate sized right ventricle. So that's basically the shunt that we're talking about. That mixing usually happens at that level. If you do have a small amount of right ventricle, you can have a ventricular septal defect, 
that will allow the mixing to happen there. But like I said, if it's a tresha, complete atresia, usually you don't really develop an appropriate uh, functioning right ventricle. All right, now let's talk about tetralogy of Fallot. Tetra means four. So you have four lesions in tetralogy of Fallot. The first one is this tissue exact, uh, called an infundibulum. And what that does is essentially it's in the center of the heart and it really kind of separates and controls everything. Because that doesn't develop correctly, what ends up happening is you now have an overriding aorta. The aorta, which should be centered normally on the left side, begins to kind of push onto the right side. This causes two effects. Number one, it basically squeezes the pulmonary artery, so you get pulmonary artery stenosis, a kind of a narrowing of the pulmonary artery. The second thing that it's caused when it moves is that you don't get that nice separation between the left and the right ventricle, so you get a ventricular septal defect. That squishing effect that we had on the pulmonary artery, which makes it smaller, makes the right ventricle now pump harder. And ultimately what it does is that it causes right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, as the muscle is working harder, the muscle gets bigger and bigger. So you get that right ventricular hypertrophy. So you get an overriding aorta, a pulmonary artery stenosis, a VSD, and then a right ventricular hypertrophy in Tetralogy of Fallot. And then finally, you have total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So normally you have four veins coming into the left atrium from the pulmonary side. So they're very highly oxygenated blood, the highest oxygen really. And that then feeds into the left atrium. However, in a TAPVR, what actually happens is those vessels are not connecting into the left atrium at all. They're going somewhere else. They can go supracardiac, which means they usually feed into the superior vena cava, and then they can go intracardiac where they're feeding inside the heart. They actually go usually to the coronary sinus, which is a vein behind the heart, or they can go infracardiac in the lower part. So they usually connect to the inferior vena cava. They can also connect in all these crazy different you know, areas, but those are the most common areas that you see total anomalous pulmonary venous return. So because there is that shunting again of oxygenated to deoxygenated blood, this is where you get that cyanosis. There are, of course, other congenital heart diseases. You have a PDA, a patent doctor's arteriosis. You have an ASD, which is a, basically a connection between the left and the right atrium. It's a large, it can be a large connection that eventually with time can cause some changes to the heart. So the cardiologists like to follow that for sure. Uh, you can also have different cardiac defects within the heart itself, problems with the valves, and so on and so forth. But I wanted to specifically talk about those cyanotic heart lesions because when you're looking at the saturations for these kids, they tend not to be fully saturated like, like what you would expect. 90, 92 or above is what we normally see in newborn babies. However, in cardiac illness where they have cyanosis, they're sats because they have this blood that's mixed, usually is in the 80s. And that is actually okay and normal. What you actually don't wanna do, as long as they're clinically well and in no respiratory distress, which is very typical for babies who have cardiac disease, you will actually not wanna put oxygen if you have a baby that's satting 92% with a cardiac uh, disease of the cyanotic type lesion I mentioned, because what will happen is oxygen actually opens the blood vessels in the lungs. What that causes is a sort of a drop in what is called the pulmonary vascular resistance. You drop that and it causes a vacuum effect that essentially will pull blood from the right ventricle. And because of this vacuum effect, you can pull a lot of blood into the lungs and that can cause pulmonary edema or a lot of fluid collection in the lungs or even pulmonary hemorrhage where you're actually getting so much blood in there that it's actually seeping out into the lung itself so the, baby, the babies cannot breathe. So you have to be very careful with the mass management of oxygen. Okay, I hope this really helps with congenital heart disease. I hope you really like that. If you have any questions, as always, please put it in the comments below. Like this video, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel for more NICU and baby stuff. Thank you, we'll see you with the next What Is video.